So, dudes, welcome back to the Gregor Gaming Experience. I hope you're having a good day today. We're taking a look at an EUL game. Uh, I usually don't cover EUL that much. Uh, NAL just kind of fits my schedule more. However, uh, this was a game that came up on Monday at a very convenient time for me, so I decided to tune in and uh, take a look at G2 doing a really interesting uh, Chalet Garage take. You'll notice the operators that are in the thumbnail aren't picked here. They attack a repick to the specified operators for this take. They see that Secret is going garage. When they drone out Wamai and Goyo, they'll find that they have hair, which is convenient because this video was sponsored by Keeps. I don't know about Cade though. I, I don't know what's going on with them. Keeps is a service that helps men deal with male pattern baldness all from the comfort of their home for cheap prices and with a robust support system. Men, two out of three of them, will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they reach age 35. Cool gamer facts. Another cool gamer fact is Keeps has you covered. It's not the end of the world if it happens to you. Keeps will help you stop the hair loss that is occurring and will help you take care of the hair that you already have on your head. Keeps has a network of prescribers, care specialists, and medical advisors that will take a look at what's going on with your hair and have a custom-made, tailor-made plan specifically to deal with your hair needs. And in my opinion, the best part about all of this is that you can do it from here. You can do it from your computer desk. Everything is shipped right to your door, and you can talk with all the people you need from the comfort of your own home. It's better to act sooner than later when it comes to male pattern baldness. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off of your first order, go to keeps.com slash Gregor. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Gregor, you will get 50% off of your first order. And thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Now, Garage used to be the one of the default sites on, on Chalet before it got reworked, and still to a certain extent uh, in ranked after the rework. The reason that uh, competitive teams don't really like going on Garage that much is that it's too funnel heavy. It's really easy to pinch and, and entrap the defenders. As a defender, you have to uh, make sure that this wall doesn't get blown up. You have to make sure that wine wall doesn't get blown up and this wall as well. You also have to worry about vertical play from above. And you have to allot people to deal with the vertical play. The geometry of, of this part of the map just kind of stinks, right? Because as soon as this is open, then the attackers can, can cover, they, they can hold the blue cross. They can contest the guy on, a, on, on this angle. Somebody over here to a lesser, uh, to a lesser extent can contest part of connector. When this is open, somebody can contest the pillar spot. When this is open, somebody contests the connector spot. And then that gives the defenders not really a lot of places to move around. Again, when vertical play is taken into account, it's pretty much impossible to, for them to play directly on the site. So there's not a lot of wiggle room, right? Like you can, you can as a defender, like you can, you can kind of play like, like here in blue a little bit. Um, you can, you can hide uh, like, like here, right? You understand what I'm saying? There, there's just, there's just not a lot in terms of, in terms of, uh, places that defenders can really, um, play off of, right? Like play off a of contact. Like maybe you can hide behind this, right? But it's, it's tough. And that's the reason it's not really played in comp, but it is played a lot more in ranked because let's face it, ranked teams aren't as coordinated and they're not going to get as much as this, much of this stuff open. Um, but in competitive, that's not an issue. So this was very much a ranked round. Uh, G2 sees what's going on with the garage take, and they go, you know, let's do a little bit of year two. Let's do a little bit of year two, year three meta. All right, let's bring a glass, a ying, and do a smoke plant. And they swap big time. Look at these swaps. Finca to glass. Therm to open the wall. Ying to push the envelope a little bit. And Osa, Osa to give themselves a nice power position, right, to hold with. Now, to start it all off, we can even talk about the ADSs, and we can talk about the fact that there's that there's a Jaeger ban on the board. Uh, G2 has decided to ban Jaeger. Now, on attack, this is interesting, because what it does is it allows you to, to use your explosive utility, right, especially your frag grenades, a lot earlier on in the round than you're used to. And here's something to keep in mind about, about uh, Jaeger versus Wumai. One of, the, one of the key aspects about Jaeger that separates him from Wumai is the fact that his ADSs zap 
the grenade completely. They don't end up detonating. So what happens here is Barry. Alamo, Barry. Alamo, I don't know how to say his name, sorry, uh, throws the nade, and then Cade can't, you know, play close on this, right? Which is whatever. He's Cade, obviously he can throw it from a distance. But in your ranked games, I think you guys should probably take this into consideration, right? If you don't have a Jaeger ADS um, on this particular spot right here, the usual uh, combination of Jaeger ADSs, um, so much for your bandit player, right? So much if you're trying to bandit trick it, or if you have somebody co close like playing on trash can, if they're a weirdo, uh, you know, because because they just want to play like really aggro. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. Is that is that well, my yeah, he can move the grenade to like a different spot, but at the end of the day, like the grenade doesn't really matter where you where you put the Wamai disc, right? Like, it could be over here, it could be over here, it could be over here. Either way, you can't play close on the wall. But this is the most important aspect. Because the nade is in play, right? Because the nade has to detonate eventually, right? Boom. Okay? That's what's going to happen with the, with the Wamai disc. Remember, it doesn't zap it away. So, Keenan knows this, and he's like, ah, frick. Like, what do I do? That's right. I can't throw it now. I don't know if the frag grenade's going to catch it or nice. what. I mean, I guess I could throw it here. Then when my disc is over here, the blast radius shouldn't reach the uh, shouldn't reach the cade stick, right? He's probably not exactly looking at the actual um, detonation spot itself. All right, it's either one of these two. Uh, oh, wrong color. Either one of these two. Actually, it is the right color because it's because it's orange team. One of these two locations for it. So he doesn't end up throwing. I, I personally probably would have panicked and just ended up throwing it earlier. I think that's the reason that he held on to it for a little bit longer. But ultimately, uh, the wall gets open because he holds on to it for too long. Whether or not that's because um, the frag grenade rightfully would have blown it up or because it was, a, it was a missed call. Regardless, I think that's the reason that he doesn't end up throwing the stick until it's too late it's go and the wall gets blown it. open. So that's what a Jaeger ban can do for well. you. Pops Maybe. Potentially. I don't know. If you have a timing that's based off of a... You need a nade somewhere, and you need it to not get blown up, a Jaeger ban might be the solution for you. So this is huge. The uh, the casters even pointed out 45 seconds into the round with the wall open is big. Doki's like, hey, let's go, let's go. I want to shoot stuff. Let's get it. Drill me in. Not yet. Still got to wait on the Goyo stuff. Citizen's trying to keep an eye out for peaks. Citizen popped off this game, by the way. Holy crap, I think he ends with like 14, 15 kills by the end of this. Maybe more than that. Citizen's... Uh, not the last... Not the... The first or the last time, I think, he'll pop off in Shell Life. Smoke goes up. Now, this is something interesting that Doki does. Okay? He doesn't shoot the cam. He doesn't shoot the cam. Because the defenders do not have intel yet. They do not have intel on whether or not a glass is up. Remember... Glass is not picked, like, pretty much at all right now. This is a very, very rare, very niche strategy that's being employed. And that's one of the things I like about Siege, is that sometimes even, quote-unquote, bad characters can still shine if you bring them for the right situation and you surprise your opponent. And that's exactly what's happening here. The opponent does not know that somebody can shoot them from the smoke. When's the last time that Glass was set up for a smoke plant through smoke? Right? Not, not common anymore in this current meta. So he doesn't shoot the cam because he knows that if shooting, if shooting the cam through smoke means, oh, there's, there's only one way they could have done that. So he's waiting. Gone six on, uh, on, on glass, which <laughs> some of you who uh, are, are fans of the PP2000 meme for glass might find kind of funny. I have a video I want to do in the gone six later. I, I've changed my mind on several aspects about this thing, but... More on that later. Now, the smoke is is flush with the wall. And you might think, well, what the heck? How are you going to... This this is really risky, right? That you can just go into the smoke and then plant, and then you might get, like, blown up by, by C4 or... Goyo canister, smoke grenades? What, what's going on? What's going on with the smoke? The smoke is not meant for the plant. The smoke is meant for Ying. The smoke is meant for Citizen. And Citizen is going to use this, right, this cover. I'm just going to kind of, you know, whatever. Good enough, right? When you're crossing here, if you want to go from here to here, you have to worry about Blue Door. Well, Blue Door can't see you this way. Main main staircase, trash can, can't see you this way. So what do we do now? Well, we want to leverage our map control. And the biggest piece of map control we can get in this situation, based off of what we have with the utility setup, is connector. So 
He's going to flash the crap out of connector and then get Kate off of this spot. So here he goes. Candela. All you guys freaking out, right? Because because Ying lost a little bit of her flash time. Remember that she has four of these freaking things now, and it's so much easier to hit people with them. Doesn't matter if they're not blind for two seconds. They're blind for long enough. All right, just go. Just go. Do what Citizen does here. See this? This guy's full blind. Easy. Push up more. Citizen's cracked. Easy. You got it. Gets a collat. Huge play by, by Citizen here. Pretty much opens up the round completely. And an unfortunate lineup by Secret, you know, instantly uh, turns this from a 5v2. Or, uh, sorry, into a from a 5v5 into a 5v2. Huge three-piece. Round's pretty much over at this point. Even with the 4v2, you know, there's too much map control opened up here. Plants going down. Like, whatever. Good round. And the smoke goes down. Remember that less bodies means less util, not just not just less guns. That's no C4 from Goyo. That's no smokes from from smoke, and you know an impact. I guess is all you can really do in this situation to try and desperately keep the plant from going down. But there's just D2 have too many bodies and too much util at their disposal, and this is this is such a huge like. There's no way, right? Just look at the geometry of it. What are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna fight. All three people outside this, plus somebody on the Oster Shield. Good freaking luck, dude. Good round. And something else that's interesting here too, right? There is a little bit more counterplay. You can you can make a desperate bid for it, despite the glass being on the board. If you peek, you'll probably get sniped by glass. But let's pretend there's not a glass on the board. So you hear the plant noise down, and you as a defender, you're like, okay, oh crap. Hey, I'm gonna stop you. Ah, I'm just gonna like spray bullets. Yeah, right. Um, here's the thing. There's an Osa shield. So even if you spray through the smoke, it's not gonna work. Osa safely gets it gets the shield down, provides Prano with cover while he plants. So even if they do a random spray here out of desperation, he's gonna be able to plant the bomb safely. And and I just I love seeing more Osa plays. Just in general, I, I love seeing her um get play. In competitive because I, I I really feel like she's one of the most slept on characters in the game right now. I, I don't think ranked has really caught up quite yet, but it makes you think, you know, uh, some operators that don't really get as much play as as the as the big meta operators right now. There's no, there's no Finca on the board here, right? There's no Finca. There's no Sledge. There's no Yana. This is a pretty unconventional comp, and and it pulled off uh, in due part because Citizen is crazy, but also because G two brought tools that were suitable for the goal that they were trying to accomplish that matched the environment that they were in and it worked out and that's that's cool because that and that's what siege is all about and it's pretty it's pretty dope so yeah let me know what you guys thought of this video let me know what matches you'd like me to cover uh you know in the past present or future and i will see you all in the next one deuces